presence of the Most High God. Remember the church. Remember the people of the church, God. Remember those who are sick, afflicted, and shed in and bereaved. Especially remember those uh, people in the city of Ferguson, uh, Missouri, yes, Lord. and overseas, Lord, that you bless our servants, men, and women who are everywhere. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I said it tells you it's not sure. It's like a roaring lion. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, and you look for the weak sheep. We can't go fast. And it's up on the side. Hallelujah. He grab them. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We worship you. And we magnify you. Bless and sanctify in your mighty name, Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Today's scripture reading is taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 34 to 43. Yes, Lord. You heard him? Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. And say ye, save us, O God of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the good evil, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And the people said, Amen. And praise the Lord. So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord Asaph and his brethren to minister before the Ark continually. Every day's work required. And of his deedom with their brethren, three score and eight. Of his deedom also the son of Jezusah, son at Osa, to be porters. And Zadok the priest, then his brother, the priest, before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place was Gibeon. To offer burnt offering unto the Lord upon the altar of the burnt offering continually morning. Burnt offering continually morning and evening, and to do accordingly to all that is written in the law of the Lord. Which is which he commanded Israel. And, and with them, Heman and Jetuzim, and the rest of that king were chosen. Expressed by name to give thanks to the Lord, because his mercy endures forever. And with them, Eman and Jetuzim, and trump with trumpet and cymbal yes. for those that should make a sound, mm-hmm. and with musical instrument of God, and the son of the Jeduzam were porters. And all the people departed, every man to his house. And David returned to bless his house. Amen. Amen.
just bubbling, a bubbling up inside of them. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Elder Green, Elder Green, glory! Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes. Away. 
upon the heaven branch that we are in full, be purged, that it may bring, it may bring forth more fruit. Yes, yeah. you know, that, you know, he purged it. He purged it and he said, Hallelujah. No, we are clean through the word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which I have spoken unto you. That means the word of God cleanse you. And the word of God keep you. And the word of God save you. If you're not abiding in, in the word, you can't mm -hmm. get nothing from God. Hallelujah. You have to mm -hmm. abide in him. You have to walk in, in the mm -hmm. word. You have to mm -hmm. talk in the word. You have to live a God in life. To all get right. on what you want right. from life. Not mm -hmm. punky punky. Not mm -hmm. hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Me was here and I was here and the other time and this. You have to walk in the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Live right. a Christian life. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Not as oh glory. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah. 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 No, we are clean through the word which I have spoken and unto you. Abide in me and hide in you. As I as the branch cannot bear fruit of them except abide in the vine. The branch can't bear nothing. So you see, hallelujah, you're here. And if you don't have Jesus Christ on the inside, you don't make any sense. for 
joy night, but joy coming in the morning. In Jesus' name, y'all keep praying for me and my family. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In my heart.
this time, please stand. Hold up the nationals. Thank you. This time, I'm going to introduce to you the Word of God. Our pastor, Pastor Dennis Moon, will bring to you the Word of God in all of it. And we be redeemed and filled for the weeks to come in Jesus. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. 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 Let the church say amen. 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 God has spoken. Let the church say amen. amen. While we stand here, Lord God, in your precious name, the name is above every name. Yes, it is. The only name of given unto heaven among men whereby we must be saved, but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give honor to the Son, Lord God, who you created in your image and likeness the same way you created man. We give you great praise and honor the glory today, but this is the day the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad. I am so glad that you lifted us, Lord God. I'm so glad for your praise, Lord God. I thank you for the testimonies and the praise that came before you, Lord God. I thank you for the worship that we presented to you, Lord yes. God. We hope that you have received and encountered acceptable with our reasonable service. We thank you, Lord God, that we saw praise in your sanctuary this morning. We saw the saints gathered together, Lord God, to worship you in dance, Lord God. We, 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 we exalt you, Lord God. Sometimes we need a little push to hey. know that you are God, that you're present, Lord God, and to be mindful of why we come to church. We just stay at home and sit hey. down, Lord hey. God. We just stay and be like the old Chicago Bears uh, and sit on our hands and sit on our laurels, Lord God. But we're super champions, Lord God, because we are super conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Through Christ Jesus, you have made us, you have raised us, you have restored us, you have prepared us, who lead and guide us through our everyday, who sanctify us through our truth, who his word is true, Lord God, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly of all that we could possibly ask. So thank you. We thank you for that divine word, Lord God, the intervention, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we ask that you come now, Lord God, and anoint the word of God that you share with Yay! us, you share with your wonderful congregation. We pray, Lord God, the strength and the joy that comes with us, Lord God, that you renew us like the eagle, Lord God, that we mount up and fly, Lord God. I thank you for our scripture reader for today, Lord God, who uh, I could not even sleep last night because I kept reading that same chapter over and over. And then you stirred up the evil this morning and caused it to be read into our congregation. You're a good God, Lord God. You're awesome. You're terrible. You're great. You're mighty, Lord God. By two immutable things, it's impossible for God to lie. We give God great praise and thanks for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Give God praise for us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my and God. And thanks to my mom who was in the service of the Lord today. That little young silver fox over there. She only 35. Keep hope alive. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord to all the saints of the Most High God. I just want to give God uh, praise and thanks for His uh, bountiful benefits toward us. And it's just amazing how. Uh, we're sitting in this air conditioning room down here, and the uh, church down the hallway is sweating. In the room, they can't get the air conditioning fixed. And when, they, when they haven't got it fixed, they got the giant size fan running, and the Lord just blessed us to be in heavenly places. Yes, so. yeah. But sometimes, I remember the days uh, at Old 35th Street when we didn't have air conditioning yet. Amen. Yeah, I'm the only that. air conditioning we had was hand fans. Yeah, amen. And uh, you tried to get the Urshan. You try to get in good with them. Get with them good fans, the ones that didn't bend. <laughs> Amen. You smile with them, you smile for the rest of them. So you get a good fan. Or you get two or three fans to hold them together properly. But you know what those days remind us of? That it won't be long. Thank you, Lord. And I say that for Dr. Evans there. Dr. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Young uh, people, they ought to be in church. I was. I was impressed by one of my clients uh, on Friday. When I got to talk and I was singing, I had the headphones on. Uh, I was singing one of the songs and he said, I, I played that song in our church uh, that this past Sunday. He says, I know that song you're singing. I, took, I said, huh? He said, I know that song you're singing. He said, I said, well, yeah, wonderful. Uh, he says, I like to play the drums. I said, you do? I said, you play drums at the church? He said, no. It's a big church. I said, so what's the, that ex, experience of we're just there temporarily till God gives us a new home? I said, well, if the Lord bless you and you get back home with your parents, the first thing you do is seek me out. 
I need, I got trouble in reserve right here waiting for you. And he said, Pastor, if the Lord say the same, that's a promise. And I said, oh, well, how old are you again? He's something seven. <laughs> I just had to make sure I was talking to a young man. He said, he said that young people, we ought to be in church. Because there's nothing out here on the streets for us but death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, how old are you again? He said, seven. There's nothing out on the street but death. Yeah. And so I said, here's a young man separated from his father and dad in a false home. But then he really realized that the importance and necessity of being in church. And I just started giving God great praise. And I like the, I like God is, uh, he's awesome. Yeah. You know, he knows, he knows how to work things. Yeah, I had not talked about the green before, but uh, she made a scripture from yesterday, from First Chronicles chapter number 16. And that, I was reading it, and I just, I went back and started reading it again. And I read it again, I said, because these scriptures connect, to those of you who know your, your Bible, you, you know that uh, most of the things that you read in the Chronicles, what you read in Samuel, what you're going to read again, yeah. uh, in uh, Kings. So they're repeating themselves, they're repetition. So what the word repetition in Greek means is to deuteronomize, or the word we get the word from Deuteronomy, which means to repeat what you have already learned. So what we're doing, when we're reading the scriptures, is just repeating all the things that we're learning that we've already learned, or renewed to us the things that we already knew we knew when we forgot about. It. Amen. So I thank God for today with you, and uh, uh, I thank you for your presence. And I always say I give God praise and honor to. Uh, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost and God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is in this place, yes, uh, who have brought all of us here together to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I know that the number could be more and many more. I saw some of our members yesterday at the Afro Fest in, in Jamaica Fest. They yeah. did today. They not here today. Mm -hmm. I saw them yesterday. See, people don't ever know, you don't know where God's going to have you. That's right, that's right. And um, everything in your cup ain't always legal. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's tell, uh, tell yeah. them about that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I tell people I am not a cop. I'm not a Holy Ghost cop. I am not trying to find out what you do, what you're doing, who you're doing, and where you go. He's everywhere. He's on there. Yeah. He knows everything. Everything. Matter of fact, let me say, he knows everything before we even think what we do. Yeah. Yeah. If we only realize that who we're dealing with is God. And remember that. See, sometimes we get discouraged, we get disgruntled, and we forget about it. He's still here. Yeah. He's still everywhere. He's and we, we'll fall out with ourselves. Uh, we get mad at people. We get mad at churches. But we don't ever get mad at God. And I was listening to someone saying, who are you arguing with this person? I'm arguing with God. I'm mad at God. So why? Because what he did. So, but that, did you praise him for what he didn't do? Hey! So what, is, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What he didn't do? He didn't kill you for getting mad at him. Right. There's one man that touched an ark. Yes. The ark, oh. And he died immediately. So, and he got mad. And, and David got so mad he let the ark stay there for three months. Because yeah. he was afraid of God. <laughs> That's the kind of God I want to reverence. Now, he, he is not a, a God of disproportion or disrespect. God, why, why did you, why, uh, we were watching a movie, I can't remember which movie it was, and uh, she was mad at, her, 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 at God because he, no, have not have not see we don't see that. <laughs> see, I saw it come, shot right now, it's not, it's the preacher of LA, and the, <laughs> uh, okay. the preacher got healed, and the, and the sister still stayed under crack cocaine, yes, and, yes. and she was on, she was mad at God. So why did you bless him, but you didn't bless him? No, tell him, And then down the road, and up and say, I blessed him so he can bless you. Sometimes we want God to do it our way. We yeah. want, we don't want to wait on God to do it his way. Yeah. He said, who is, who is exempt from paying taxes? Ask Wesley Smart. Nobody. Nobody. Be out now. That movie, Expendable 3. Yeah. Here's a footnote. Everything that you get paid go right back to taxes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It'd be all right. Oh, yeah. It is so important, it's so essential to us as Christians to remember our place in society. Uh -huh. Remember, this we are only passing through. See, our relationship with God is not, is, this is only the beginning, it's not the end. 
Even when we die, those who have hope will not die but sleep. That's why I don't get all bent out of shape. My sister's crying on the uh, you gotta go pray for so and so. Go to the hospital to pray for him. You remember I said, I don't have to go to the hospital to pray for him. You asked me to pray for him. I started praying while you were still on the phone talking. She said, but if you just go. I said, hold on, Lazarus. <laughs> I said, wait a few days. And my, my, my sister said, who is Lazarus? Why did you just call me Lazarus? I said, because if, if he goes somewhere, God can resurrect him. But I want to. Uh, encourage this wonderful congregation, and, and I want to praise the Lord for Sister Deidre being with us this morning, and Sister Deidre Alexander. See, I, yeah. I tickle to see Deidre without talking about her. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sister yeah. Deidre Alexander behind you. Yeah. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Sister Deidre Friday night uh, brought in a corral of people for the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brought people in from the cast. Brought them in. Brought them in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's, we used to do that. We used to invite people to church. Instead of just coming to church, we used to invite people to church. Then if this is so good to us that we come, why yes, don't we yes. recommend it to others that they come? If what we got. Oh, yes, well, it's, it's, a, it's a process, Pastor. I know it. I know it. I was talking to the uh, pastor of, uh, of uh, First Baptist. Pastor Fairchild's church. Uh, first, is, is that First Baptist? Uh, uh, greater faith. Greater faith. Greater faith. Greater faith. I was talking to First Baptist yesterday. I was talking to him. The choir tore the place up yesterday. Tore the place up. And uh, and and then uh, even the brothers from the stylistics, they were there. Uh, they was they was the other side of the program. Well, uh -huh. uh, brother Ronnie started praising the Lord. He was out back there. He was cutting the step back. There. I said, Yeah, Ronnie, I remember you. Remember you remember the old Apostolic Church of God with those huh? I said, See everybody who is uh, in the secular world, it's not, if always somewhere, somewhere in their life, they keep church. Yes, yes. And uh, Brother Ronnie, one of the lead singers in the uh, stylistics, got baptized by Bishop Arthur and Brazier. So he, Bishop Brazier only said he only baptized a few people. And he baptized him at a young age. So he would say, he said, an anointing came over him. Just like, well, but I was talking to the pastor about worshiping, and I said, man, you, you're doing beautiful. You got your choir. Uh, I said, I remember when Pastor Fairchild passed away, the church split up and went every direction. He was building it back up. I said, I've got to commend you on that. He said, I'm not doing it. It's the people who have a mind to work. Yes, yes, yes. He said, I'm just there feeding the flock who they bring in to be fed. And those who are servers and workers, they are the ones that's making the church a church again. He said, but the spirit of uh, Pastor Fairchild is in that place and it's just, it keeps hope alive. So I just want to keep my hope alive because I get discouraged. I do. I really do get discouraged sometimes when I come here because I'm new. I'm new. Yeah, I, yeah. I figured by this time there'd be about 50, 75, 100 people in this congregation, but they come and go. And I say, but I can't, I can't count numbers. God said, I, I count on you. He says, and I said, now how you going to count on numbers if you want to tell me to tell people you don't count on numbers? I said, but so don't you measure us by our faith? He says, Faith is the substance. He it says, so if you have substance, you have faith. So I said, what I need to do is I need to get some more substance. Yes, so I will Lord. ask God for substance today. Uh, Sister Mona, I, I know I put down uh, Second Corinthians. Uh, would you go to First Corinthians chapter 9 for me? And uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter 9. Where would you put it? Uh, it was a, a label on your uh, computer. <laughs> uh, a do, uh, 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 do it that you gave me. You told me to put the answer. You know where I'm at. Okay, what is 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I, I don't know where I'm going to start. I, I hear one thing, but more start working with another thing. But I want to just, the one scripture I want to read in your hearing today is verse number uh, 12 in Psalm 116. A very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, most preachers, I find us reading the scripture at funerals, homeboy services. It, it's, a, it's a Buddhist uh, passage that we use in homeboy services. No man. I just want one verse out of Psalm 116, verse number 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? And this is the word of, uh, and I was praying and I was asking God for directions for today for the again of uh, food. Uh, I, I was, I've been, one of my favorite words is benefits. I don't know how to quote that. I like saying that. 
Psalm 68:19. He gave me all because of benefits. I love benefits. But the word that the Lord kept speaking to my spirit was render. What shall I render unto the Lord? For all of this, how can I pay God back for paying me? What can I give God for what he gives to me? The Christian, the man and woman of God today uh, must carefully, excuse me, we must carefully and spiritually identify our source that we get from God. Uh, and reward, wait for it, God, <laughs> reward God for what he daily does us with benefits. I, I listened to uh, Sister Alexander's testimony, so I'll say your name last name because I've been calling Sister Carpenter all week. Uh, and so Sister Alexander, uh, testimony as we closed out the service last Sunday, uh -huh. it rolled over to my spirit over to the nursing home. And the anointing of God just got so heavy inside that place that uh, the spirit of God moved upon the people. And Ida is 100 years old. And she said, uh, when we were leaving out, we, we, we do our, we have a little fellowship thing that we do there with them. And I was leaving out, she said, come back. And I came back in. Da 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 but you totally exclaimed it and proclaimed what God has already done. Amen. Yeah. Did you not, not right now? Right now, He's already done it. So I'm going to praise Him for suddenly, certainly the knowledge of God is what true religion uh, must come from God. Yeah. We, I'll, I'll teach him, uh, Sub Commission Freddie, he'll tell us, he said, you must stand on truth. Yeah. True, truth, and what is true. I told the Christian education class just a few minutes ago. That if you tell a lie long enough, so long, so often, the same way, exactly the same way, it will sound like truth to you. And so when you expound on the true truth, my, my mother said you can't make no mistake telling the truth. You only stumble when you lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Paul writes to the church of Corinth, chapter 9, and I want to talk about what shall we render to the Lord? What are you going to give God? What will the church of God give God? What do, you, what do you give God? Do you give him your body? Do you give him your soul? It belongs to him. You can't give him your soul. Do you give him your spirit? It's his too. He put it in. Oh, wait. Let me clap. Your body belongs to him too. No, you know that your body is what? The temple of what? Of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. So even everything... The shoes on my feet belong to God. Wait, wait for this. Wait. The air that I breathe belongs to God. Seventy-two percent hydrogen, uh, twenty-eight percent oxygen, and, and uh, uh, all the carbon that go in and out of my body, God designed it that way. He don't allow seventy-four percent to cause me to have congestive heart failure, or he doesn't allow thirty percent of the other to cause me to have lung failure. He knows exactly how much I need because he made me. Yes. The scripture said uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So, uh, verse number 11. In the in first Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, no, first Corinthians. First Corinthians uh, 9 11. And songs unto you spiritual things. Yeah. This power over you. Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live after the things that are in the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the When I saw y'all dancing at the altar today, y'all y'all became, you know what? Partakers of the altar worship. When was the last time one of you convicted outside of the Sister Deacon Richard? 
convicted by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that come down for all to pray. Hey! We don't we don't do those things I used to do. I don't do no more. We say that in the natural thing, but we don't do those things in the spiritual either. Don't y'all know we used to use we used to need strength. We would come down to the altar and ask God for strength. Yeah. We would come and pray that for the Lord Jesus. Yeah. We don't think we need those things anymore. Because we got laptops, we got iPods, we got iPads. We can continue dial a prayer. <laughs> Verse 14, Sister uh, Dr. Brewer. Thank you, Sister Brewer. Look lovely today. Yes. Look, she looks lovely today. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Should what? Should live out the gospel. But I have none of these things. Neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that. Or, if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, or necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me. If I preach not, stop. If I don't preach the gospel, I will be in trouble with God. Yes. Like you. And Paul writes in the church, in the second chorus, it says, it was our lesson this morning. If our gospel be here, it is here to them that are lost. And if the preacher don't preach the gospel, guess what? He is lost. She is lost because she's hidden or he is hidden. That which God has ordained or called him or her to bring. The contents of, of the gospel is, is, is not minimal truth. It is full truth. Uh, it is all the totality of everything of God. And we have been bought with a price. Uh, brother, sister, uh, so when Jesus died on the cross for you and me, much more should we live without a cross on our back for him. I, my, my pastor many years ago used to talk about how the brothers and sisters, we were wearing crosses all on our neck. And, and, they, and they said, well, the old saints said, you don't need to wear a cross because he got off of the cross. Yeah. And sometimes it's a symbolism of the reminders of our relationship with God. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but if we hold those things as uh, as our, our Christianity, this is what makes us a Christian because we wear a cross. Then our what you represented as a Christian is vain. Mm -hmm. Your life should yes. exemplify the Christian that you are. Uh, I I sat many times yesterday. Uh, I was I was working yesterday, Mom. I was on a five-hour visitation at at Afro Fest. That kind of worked out pretty good for me. Yeah. You know? I, I had a two-hour drive to go to get my clients and a two-hour drive to take them back. So I was worn out. I was really worn out, but I was glad uh, to uh, been there. And I sat among many people. I, I saw the politicians and everybody. So uh, one of the brothers says, there's a pastor over there praising the Lord. And all you people are sitting down. I wanted to tell them, I told you that you said music. Uh, I get excited when I hear music, <laughs> musicians and drummers. I said, so I could not sit up. And so just think about heaven. If it's going to be like that, I, 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 I'm probably never going to have a seat. <laughs> My chair going to get dust and everything on because I'm never going to be sitting I'm going to be standing up praising God. I'll probably be down there bowing down before him, taking my crown and throwing it down before his feet because I don't want what I not preach, not to go into your spirit, but what I preach, go into your spirit that you will render unto God. <coughs> what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? Now let me tell you about the race that we run. Drop down to verse number uh, 24. Uh, I'm almost finished. Uh, everybody gonna run the race, but only one. Every man. Shout 
boxing in the air, fighting in the air. Yeah. Y'all remember, y'all tell about, y'all remember that, that uh, movie that play, the arms too short, the box was gone? Yeah. Uh, that was powerful back in the 70s, 80s. Uh, it, it brought the church to a bridge over troubled water yeah. because you can't fight God. How can we, who we made, fight him who made us? <laughs> so he said, but I keep my, my, my body under yeah. subjection. Lest by any means I preach to you. And then I myself be a castaway. Amen. The, uh, I'll show Sister Broome, I'd like to take these little excerpts, <coughs> Sister Sharon. There was one on the news yesterday. A 99-year-old lady in Cleveland, Ohio, ran the, uh, what was it? Uh, the, uh, New York Marathon. That, it, was, it was in Cleveland. The marathon, yeah. yeah. And it, it was just a, a straight way. She's 99 years old. She finishes. A uh, hundred yard dash, or either four hundred yard dash. She finished in eight minutes and thirty five seconds. And the, the person that won the race finished first. Well, who do you think they were praising? Who do you think came out? Everybody came out of the crowd to celebrate the woman who was ninety nine years old. She got eight minutes, but guess what? She said, "I once was young, but now I'm old." And she didn't start running till she was sixty seven. She said. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed they making break. bread. Brothers and sisters, why do we run this race and then get tired? Well, why do we quit? Why, why, why do we stop doing the things that we used to do that brought us joy, that brought us happy? I was, the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Paul writes to the Corinthian church, as I, I was saying to us earlier, it was so important that the Corinthians Understand the logistics of operating a church and operating a society. You can't separate the two. The origins are not the same. So, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, expound to this wonderful congregation the same apathy or the same minute because apostasy is, is something that is killing uh, grace and glory outside the church. Uh, we're alive, but we're dead. We're like dead men bones. We have things and we do nothing with them. We set things and we, we it's on the back end of, of our lives. 168 hours in the week, and this is probably all some of you gonna give, just this Sunday for more than worse to the church. So what do you render to the Lord for all this benefit? You will never grow tomatoes if you don't plant no plant no tomato seeds. Yes, yes. I'll say that again. You will never grow tomatoes unless you plant some tomato seeds. One, the scripture said, one planted, the same, same, same book, first Corinthians. One planted, oh, you don't have to read it. One planted, one watered, but guess what? It's God that gives the increase. God can't increase that if you ain't given nothing. Chapter 11, first Corinthians. I, I, I want to go there, and then I'm going to stop. Now I praise you, and let me read this, sisters. Thank you so much. I, I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them unto you. Uh, but I would to have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman, wait for it, is the man. And the head of Christ is God. My uh my nephew and his fiance is gonna get married. In the next month, and I was sharing this whole scripture with her, and she she almost hit the ceiling. <laughs> the man is the head over me. I said, "Let me see." According to God. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and but it's it's prerequisite. She said, "Huh?" I said, "Yeah. It's only the man is only head over you if Christ is the head over him." Hey. Amen. Hey! Hello, ladies. Hey! I'll say it again. Yeah. The man is only the head over you if Christ is the head over him. Thank you. If Christ is the head. So don't ask your wife to submit to you if you're not submitting to God. And don't ask God to bless you if you're not blessing Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Christ got to bless God. Yeah. So when, when I read it, she said, well, I'm going to take that out of the vows. I said, well, then you need to get another minister to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> because that is in the vows. I said, because she, she wanted to take it to print. 
And uh, I said, well, she thought about it. She said, well, this must be how things are kept in order. I said, yes, ma'am. Uh, I pray that my nephew will uh, be faithful to you. I pray that he keep everything in order. But I pray that he renew himself with God. So then you'll see the God in him, and then he'll be able to do the things for you that are godly for you. Right. And so as a church, we must do the things for God. Is that right, Mother McCoy? Yeah. Amen. Let's stop for a second. I want to pray for my mom in the name of Jesus. As she's walking out the door. Okay. And look, and look, uh, this is a soldier. She's going to go out on the battlefield now. All right. And touch her body in Jesus' name. Uh, yeah, I need to turn that fan that way. You got too hot for it. Right down that line. Uh, we be kind of, of these things. Uh, somebody remember, you gotta take my fan and put it over my mom. Please do that. Amen. But uh, Paul, see, we, we use 1 Corinthians chapter 11 to designate the Lord's Supper. But before you come to supper, you must, what? Be ready to eat. Yeah. Who comes with, with, with our clean hands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord? Tell me about Who it, comes to the Lord's table? But so it is not about our, our unworthiness. Right. It's about our worthiness. Yeah. Are we really worthy of the Lord? This, this room can be filled up with 70, 75 people, but it's just us here. We need to fill this place up because I don't want to stay here forever. I'm, I want to move on. I want to feel God as oh God. Don't, don't, if y'all follow in the scripture reading for the month, don't read First Chronicles chapter 29 on, on Friday after next. Don't read that. Just skip over that. The other guys are going to be shot. Because when David got finished with what God finished with him, it reminds him that what he should bring to the Lord. David says, who am I? Who am I that I should do such a great thing for you, Lord? Because I'm great, God says. That's why you do it. You don't do it for you, you do it for me. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, what we do, what we render to the Lord that we benefit from tells us what we're going to get and our rewards in heaven also too. So what you labor for God here on earth is going to be your rewards on earth as it is in heaven. Or as the, the, the Greek translated, on earth as it will be because of what you did on earth in heaven. See, the, the Greeks' words are so long, they, they transcended some of the word but to keep the flavor of the doctrine of the word. But yet at the same time, uh, they took away some of the origin of the word when they had to translate it into English. Because he says, those things that we do on earth is going to benefit us as we continue to get our rewards in heaven because of what we did on earth. There be no, we, we watched this movie Friday night that was awesome. Heaven is for real. Uh-huh. How many of you have seen that movie? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's it's powerful. It's it's, it's breath. Uh you should you should read it. And vote up. Yes. And, look, good thing don't like us. Look. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That that thing says, I'm getting down with all of you. Leave me here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, uh I want to just say this to this wonderful body of Christ and to us who are absolute believers. If you really believe what you believe you are, you ought to give God more than what you're giving him. Uh, 168 hours in a week, you ought to give more to God than just a little time. I know everybody can come to church every day, every week. You take that to go over, but you ought to be able to come something. Bible class, Christian education class. These, why do they call them classes? Because they're designed to help us yeah. and to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, singing and fellowship. We're going to fellowship today in, uh, in, Rivers, in Riverside. Uh, Pastor Herman Walker, him and his wife, and a couple of his members came to our church anniversary. So uh, we're finishing back to them what they did for us. They came to worship with us, so I'm going back to worship with them. My district elder uh, is having a service at the end of this month. And the flames. 